Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the PBP, the pregnancy, birth and postnatal series with me, Alex. I am just a mum going through my own experiences into motherhood and answering questions that hopefully, you know, you may have because I definitely had loads of questions along the way. So today I'm going to get into my birthing story. But before I do that, make sure that you like subscribe, switch on the notification bell. I always forget to say that so that you never miss any of the videos. Of course, comment down below. As I said, I'm gonna be getting into my own birth story and share, share with anyone that you know is pregnant and is about to embark on this journey. So hopefully it's a bit lighthearted and encouraging for women, especially black women. We know that there are higher statistics of black women in terms of having a higher mortality rate when it comes to giving birth and my pregnancy and birth experience was a positive one and that's part of the reason why I started this channel in the first place because it's imperative that you as a pregnant woman make sure that you only listen to positive birthing stories. I know that there are negative ones out there and there are going to be people that try to tell you about them but please just say to them you know I don't really want to listen to this right now you only want to hear the positive stuff. So without further ado, I'm going to get into my birthing story. So I labored for in total about 40 hours from start to when I was having like my first frequent contractions to when my son was actually born. So that's like what a day and a half, almost two, in fact, almost two days. So eight hours short of two days. So that's quite for me. I thought it was a long time. I wasn't sure how long it was going to be, but definitely you know, a large chunk of my life dedicated to meeting my son. And it started about 11 a.m. on the Tuesday, and then I gave birth at 3 a.m. on the Thursday. So I spent most of my Tuesday, like during the initial contractions, just laboring at home, spent lots of time on the exercise ball. That was what was helping me. I was doing my breathing techniques and that I'd been practicing all throughout my pregnancy. Well, as soon as I found out about breathing and yeah, it was helping me. So yeah, that Tuesday, from 11 a.m. was fine. I was really excited. I was like, yes, they're coming regularly. The big moment is gonna happen soon. And then um, 7 p.m. came and I felt like my contractions were peppering me, like seriously, seriously. They were coming about every five minutes at that point. So I thought, okay, we're, we're nearing the big moment. Who knows, maybe he might even come tonight. That's what I thought. And I called the birth center and I explained to them the situation, you know, I've been laboring since 11 a.m., it's 7 p.m. now, it's coming every five minutes, you know, when can I come down? They said, wait, you know, that's not quite how it works, stay where you are, you're not quite ready. So they told me to take a hot bath, to relax, to eat, to sleep, all of those good things. Let's just allow the laboring to continue and see how it goes. So I did, I took a hot shower, tried my best to sleep it was hard because the contractions were a lot for me and I've never experienced this kind of pain before and that's the thing with contractions can't really explain how they feel like but and the, I don't remember how they feel like now but they they're definitely an experience so tried my best and it was probably early hours of the morning so maybe about 12 one o'clock and I said no that's it no sorry we need to go to the birth center and called the birth center and I said look listen I've been laboring since since the last time you people told me it's still five minutes it's been consistent like I need to come down now and they said okay fine if that's what you want to do then come down so got everything ready me and my partner made sure all of our things were together bags of course in the back and I, I brought a towel with me so I put the towel on the seat just in case my water was going to break because my water hadn't broken at this point and we drove down to the birth center and on my way obviously the contractions were you know a lot but I had asked my friends and family to record positive affirmations so I listened to the positive affirmations on my way going to the birth center. And that was the best thing like that I could have ever done. It was just so nice hearing everyone's calm voices, telling me I've got this, telling me, you know, can't wait to meet little man and all that. And I was just holding on to 
what's I don't know what that thing's called in the car like it's like it's on the side and you can hang your clothes on it but that was the first time in my life I've ever used it so my hand one hand was on there and the other hand was on the seat gripping it you know just like okay let's let's get down to this birthing center so got to the birthing center parked up as soon as we arrived I had a contraction so you know they just allowed me to contract and then they escorted us to one of the rooms and the first thing that they did was check my blood my blood levels because during my final trimester I had really really low iron levels I was considered anemic so they wanted to make sure that my blood count count sorry was enough so that I would be able to give birth there so I did the test everything was fine my blood count was okay and then the next thing of course was for them to check how dilated I was and I had been praying religiously for this moment like please Lord allow me to be four centimeters so that you know I don't have to be turned back home everything's going to be fine and when they wanted to check me I was quite tense so they gave me gas and air I took the gas and air was quite relaxed they checked me and I was only one centimeter so I already knew what they were going to say I was devastated I knew that they were going to send me back home and I thought to myself how am I going to cope on the journey back home like what brought me here was adrenaline and these affirmations I finished the affirmations and my adrenaline is now gone how am I going to be able to go back home so they offered me something called a TENS machine now I had heard of TENS machines beforehand but I didn't bother to get one and I'm telling you now, if you do not have a TENS machine, please go out and buy yourself one. It was my saving grace. So they loaned us the TENS machine, like you pay a deposit, they give you the TENS machine and then you're supposed to like drop the TENS machine back and then take, you get your deposit back basically. So they connected it up for me and how it works is it counteracts the pains from the contraction sending out electrical impulses it's really intricately put together and yeah used it and then when you're at the height of your contraction you press this button and it really like helps to counteract it so you know that's what i was doing she showed me how to press the button i was pressing the button and on the way back home it was fine no issues the only issue that i had was when i needed to sleep because i wanted to sleep i was really really tired but i had to keep pressing the the button so i didn't really sleep very well and then about 5 a.m i could feel this it felt like a balloon moving down and then i just heard a pop and then slowly water started to ooze out and i was like yes we're back in business because <laughs> that means that my water has broken and i know that they can't turn me back whatever the circumstances is doesn't matter how dilated i am by force by fire they have to keep me so called up the birth center again and said my water has broken you know what do I do now and they asked me to check my panty liner to see what the color like of discharge was so went to the toilet checked it and it looked a bit brown and I knew because I'd already done previous research that brown a brown tinge could mean meconium so for those of you that don't know what that means meconium is when your baby poos while still in gestation and that puts them at a higher risk because what you don't want the baby to do is to swallow their own poo so it kind of puts the pressure on getting them out obviously getting them out safely but getting them out as quickly as possible so I explained to them that I see a brown tinge they were like okay come down let's see it for ourselves and we'll let you know whether we think that there's any issues or so went down they checked the panty liner and they confirmed that yes it was definitely meconium and as far as they're concerned because it's a birth center they don't deal with anything that's considered high risk and once a baby um, presents meconium that is considered like a slightly higher risk birth so all of my dreams of having a natural birth started to go downhill from that point I was shattered I thought oh you know I'd been I'd been waiting to give birth in the birthing center because it, it really looked like a hotel it was the kind of place that I wanted to be in but you know one thing about birth that I have learned is that nothing goes according to plan if you're lucky if it does so if you have a regimented birth plan throw it in the bin because it may not go according to how you want it so the birth center then called the hospital 
uh, the, the nearest hospital, that I had the choice of two hospitals, there was one I definitely was not going to. So they called the other hospital, told them to prepare for me and they checked again how dilated I was. I was still one centimeter, so my partner drove me over to the hospital and then he parked up outside and I had a contraction there and then and then afterwards walked into the hospital and they had a wheelchair, they got a wheelchair like ready for me, sat down in the wheelchair, took me up to the delivery suites, set me all up and the, they immediately hooked me up to monitors. So one of them was for myself, so to monitor the contractions and how frequently they were coming. And the other one was to monitor uh, the baby because obviously there was meconium present and they wanted to make sure that the heart rate and everything was good. So guys, I'm gonna leave it there for this first part and I'm gonna continue in my next video how the rest of my birthing story went. So guys, make sure that you are staying hydrated, you're staying away from any stress and you're getting as much sleep as possible. Until next time, bye guys.